Thank you. Hallelujah. When uh, some people want to begin a service, they start by binding the devil. Uh, when we want to start a service, we don't bind the devil. Because I believe if he was bound yesterday, did he get loose overnight? So rather than buying the devil, we praise the Lord. Because if we praise the Lord, the enemy cannot stay. So let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Let us pray. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We're serving him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. We're serving him. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. I am serving him. What a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God I serve. Hallelujah, heaven and earth adore, even angels bow before him. What a mighty God I serve. Eternal Rock of Ages, we bless your holy name. The I am that I am, there's no one like you. You are greater than the greatest. You are better than the best. You are higher than the highest. You are older than the oldest. You are wiser than the wisest. You are richer than the richest. There's no one like you. You are the almighty God. You are the alpha. You are the omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the one who is. You are the one who was. You are the one who is to come. You are the Almighty. Your name is wonderful. Your name is Counselor. Your name is Mighty God. You are the Everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name. Receive our worship in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that tonight you will do something new. You do the kind of miracles that the world had never seen before. You will transform all the lives of everyone here present. And all those who will be listening, Lord God Almighty, all over the world, we pray that you will touch them tonight. And that at the end of it all, your name and your name alone will be glorified. And every one of us will be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's hear another shout of hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and say, you're welcome, my brother and sister. God bless you. And then you may be seated. God bless you. I want to thank the organizers of this program for giving Africa a night. On behalf of Africa, I say thank you. 
I want to say thank you to our brothers and sisters in America and Europe. On behalf of Africa, we want to thank you for the missionaries you sent to us. Thank you for the seed that was sown in Africa. I want to encourage you by telling you that the seed you sowed in Africa had germinated, had grown, had become mighty. Because right now, by the special grace of God, Africa is full of great giants of faith. Uh, I'm not even one of those giants. If the fact that I'm standing here tonight should tell you that I am the least of all the pastors over there. Because in Africa, when you want to send somebody on an errand, you look for the smallest boy. <laughs> and so the smallest boy in Africa is standing before you now. Glory be to God forevermore. I also want to encourage everybody from all over the world that when you hear of the revival going on in Africa, you should rejoice. Because the revival in Africa is not for Africa alone, it's for the whole church. It is your revival. And let's give the Almighty God a big round of applause for the revival that is going on in Africa. When I was invited to come and share tonight. I asked the Almighty God, why would you want me to go? What do you want me to go and do? Because there's so much work to be done all over the world. And he said to me, I want you to go because there's a message I want you to give to the church. I therefore trembled mightily when my brother who spoke before me began to speak. I've never met my brother before I'm meeting him for the first time tonight. And when he began to speak, he was saying exactly what God told me to tell you. My text is found in Leviticus chapter 6. From verse 12 to 13, Leviticus chapter 6, from verse 12 to 13. And I believe that the life and ministry of someone is about to undergo a drastic change tonight. It reads, And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, it shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Verse 13, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. The message the Almighty God is giving to the church at this crucial moment in history is that the fire must never go out. And I want you to say it with me. The fire must never go out. Huh. So to those of you whose fire is burning bright, I have a word of encouragement and I have a word of warning. For those of you who are doing exploits for the Lord now, those of you who are seeing miracles, signs, and wonders in your ministry, those of you who are kicking out demons, 
who are healing the sick, who are setting the captives free, those of you whose churches are busting at the seams, I have a word of encouragement. That word of encouragement comes from Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, where the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I want to encourage you that the one who started the fire is able to keep it burning forever. He started it and he will complete it because it's the beginning as well as the ending. So I want you to relax. Don't get anxious. Don't begin to feel that what God is doing today he might not be able to do tomorrow. Is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning as well as the ending. So all of you who are experiencing a revival, congratulations. The Almighty God who started the good works in you will complete it. But I have a warning. I want you to beware. I want you to beware what to do with his power. Beware what to do with the fire that is burning in you, the fire that is burning in your ministry. Beware what to do with that power because that power has been given for a purpose. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Almighty God made it clear that the reason you receive power is that you might be witnesses unto him. The power given to you is for missions. Acts chapter 8 verse 4 to 8, Acts 8 verse 4 to 8 says, They that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the gospel. In those days when the fire was burning in America and burning in Europe, they sent out missionaries. Now that the fire is burning in Africa, Africa, listen to me. God did not give you the fire just to sing and dance. And singing and dancing has its place. He has given you the power to go out and spread the gospel all over the world. That is the purpose of the fire. If the fire seems to be going low in Europe and some other parts of the world, the Almighty God is saying to Africa, bring the fire back. Come back and do the work of the missionary. They sow the seed. They should have the harvest. They should enjoy the, the power of the Almighty God is given for you to help the helpless. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Acts 3, verse 1 to 8. When Peter saw the man who was born lame, he told him, I might not have silver, I might not have gold, but I have the power of God. And he said, what I have, I give unto you. God did not give us his fire to enrich ourselves. He gave us the fire to help the helpless, to lift up those who are down, to say to the lame, rise up and walk. Do I hear amen to that? He gave us the fire for signs and wonders. He gave us the signs so that we can resist false religion. He gave us the fire so that we can say to Elimas the sorcerer, be blind. He gave us the fire so that we can uproot mountains. He gave us the fire so that false religions will not be able to take root any longer in our nations. The Almighty God knows that there will be a time when there will be all these new age movements. And that's why he has given us the fire so that we can confront them. 
God knows that there will be lying wonders. There will be those who will be performing false miracles. But he has given us a fire so that by demonstrating the power of the Almighty God, we'll be able to show the world that there is a living God. Do I hear amen to that again? Hmm. I want you to beware, those of you who are experiencing revival now, whose fire is burning bright. Beware, because the brighter the light, the thicker the darkness around it. When the king wanted to arrest Elijah, he sent 50 soldiers and a captain. When those 51 couldn't do the job because Elijah caught fire down from heaven and consumed them. He sent another 50 soldiers and a captain. When those ones perished, he sent a third one, third 50 and one captain. But when another king wanted to arrest Elisha, the man with the double portion of anointing, he sent a whole army. Because the brighter the light, the thicker the darkness around it. My brothers and sisters, those of you who are experiencing revival now, beware. The brighter the light, the thicker the darkness around it. But one thing is certain. Light will always defeat darkness. That is for sure. But you who are carrying the power of God now, remember the word of the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, 1 Peter 5, verse 8 says, You must be sober, you must be vigilant, because the fire must never go out. Thirdly, those of you whose fire might be burning bright now, remember one dangerous thing about power. Power corrupts. When you begin to see miracles happen, when you begin to lay hands on the sick and they recover, when you begin to command demons and they begin to obey, when you begin to see your churches boss at the EMs. When you find that no matter how big the building, it can contain the crowd. Be careful that you don't become swollen-headed. Be careful that you know who is the owner of the power. Be careful that you don't forget that it is God who says Power belongs to me. It is written, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. I will share a short testimony with you. We've heard about what God is doing in Nigeria, and even though it might be difficult for some of us to comprehend, it is true. And I remember very well the first time we had a great gathering. Millions of people were there. And all kinds of miracles happened. And several souls were warned that we needed a lorry to carry decision cards. And I was excited. And I was walking around the camp where I live at night praising the Almighty God. And it was around 2 a.m. in the night when all of a sudden I heard the Lord speak to me and say, Son, bend down. And when God asks you to bend down, you better bend down, particularly in Africa, because a witch might be flying past. So I bent down. And he said, draw the picture of a man on the sand. And I did. A zero for the head, a line for the body, line for the legs and arms. And he said, stand up. And I stood up. By now I was trembling because I knew there was a message. He said, clean off that which you have drawn with your leg. 
And I did. And he says, son, if you ever forget who is in charge, just as you wiped out that drawing, I will wipe you out. And nobody will ever remember that you ever existed. Take my warning, my brothers and sisters. So the fire of God is burning in you now, and the fire is burning bright. Glory to God. But be careful. If you forget the owner of the power, he will put you out. But his fire will burn on steel. So those of you whose fire is burning, congratulations. Don't be warned. Secondly, there are those of you whose fire is burning low now. Once upon a time, the fire was burning bright in you, but the fire has gone dim. I have a word of encouragement for you. The word of encouragement had been shared by my brother who spoke earlier. And that is God is able and willing to blow on your dying fire and turn it to an infant again. The almighty God is willing and able to bring a revival back to those whose fire might be burning low. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, he said, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. You know what God is saying? God is saying, I don't bury my wounded soldiers, I heal them. The Almighty God is saying, if you are willing, those of you whose fire might be burning low, He will give you a revival. I believe firmly that after this celebration, all the nations where we see the fire already burning low, the fire will begin to burn bright again. You remember very well in First King chapter 19, verse 1 to 8, First King 19, verse 1 to 8, when Elijah was feeling very low, so low that he was asking God to kill him. God didn't kill him. He sent him food. He sent him water. He said to me, boy, I've not finished with you yet. Every one of you who feel burnt out now, every one of you who feel tired, Every one of you who feel that the fire of God in you is no longer what it used to be. I believe that tonight is your night. I believe God will refresh you tonight. I believe God will revive you tonight. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. But I have a word of warning for you. I have a word of warning for you because the greatest danger of a dying fire is that it still burns. The fire may be dying, but it is still fire. You touch it, it can still burn. When you read First Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 18, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 18, you find a man whose fire was going out, Eli by name. But he was still issuing decrees. He was still saying to Hannah, your request be granted. And Hannah's request was granted. There are some people today who are still prophesying. There are still some people today who are still healing the sick. But the fire is on the way out. Because they have commercialized the power of the Almighty God. The Almighty God is saying, beware. Beware because according to Revelation chapter 3 verses 15 and 16, God will prefer that you are either hot or cold. God does not like anything lukewarm. So everyone who feels that 
once upon a time, things were better. The fire was hotter. But now the fire is going down. I want to encourage you to return to the Almighty God quickly. The Almighty God said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, Revelation 2, verse 4 to 5, say, return to your first love. Return to those days of Bible study. Return to those days of fasting and prayer. Return to those days when you can hold on to the Almighty God all night in prayer before you mount the pulpit. <clears throat> Remember those days before you became popular. Remember those days before you became a great man of God. Remember those days when you used to spend time with the Almighty God. I share with a little bit of testimony with you, and then I'll move on to the third section. Oh, there was a time when I found that the, the crowd was still coming. I was still ministering. And miracles were still happening. Souls were still being saved. But it was a struggle. A big struggle. The crowd was diminishing, but you know, if you have a crowd of 100,000 and a crowd of 99,000, they look alike. Uh, unless you count them, you might not see the difference. And, and I, was, I was sensing it in my spirit. This work is becoming more of a labor rather than an enjoyment. And then God spoke to me. And I believe God is speaking to someone here tonight. I believe God is about to give you a turn around in your ministry. And God said to me, Son, when was the last time we had fellowship together? And I pretended I didn't understand the question. You know, when God asks you an uncomfortable question, you, 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 you pretend you don't understand. And before I could dodge, he explained. He said, what was the last time we had fellowship together? And he reminded me of those days when I would be alone in the car, traveling, praising God. And the power of God would come down so mightily on me that I would have to park by the roadside and cry out and sob in joy and excitement until I could settle again. God said, when was the last time we had that kind of fellowship? Oh, Lord, you know, I'm no longer alone in the car. My driver is in the front seat. I'm sitting at the back. If all of a sudden I began to cry, he would wonder what's going on. And God said, oh, so it is my fault that I prospered you. It is my fault that I gave you not only a car, but a driver to drive it. I said, Lord, I am sorry. If I can't do it in the car anymore, I will do it outside the car. And I remember that night, after everybody was asleep, I sneaked out of the house, and I went to a corner in the camp where no one would disturb me, and I began to worship the Almighty God. I've been doing it just for a few minutes when his presence came. And I'm telling you, brethren, after that, things changed. Things changed so dramatically that now all I need to do is wave my hands and the sick will be healed. All I need to do is wave my hands and the lame will begin to walk. I prophesy to someone here tonight, after tonight, when you wave your hands, the sick will be healed. The captives will be set free. Because your revival will come again. Do I hear amen loud and clear unto them? Finally and thirdly, I want to speak to those whose fire had gone out. I mean completely gone out. I have for you a word of encouragement and a word of warning. A word of encouragement because God 
is able and willing to rekindle your fire. Remember something. In Judges chapter 16, verse 22, after the enemy had plucked out his eyes, after they had put him in prison because his fire went out, the Bible says the hair on his head began to grow again. Whoever is the Samson that is here today, that fellow who used to hear from God, that fellow who used to be mightily used of God, that fellow who is aware that the fire is gone, I have good news for you. Samson, your hair will grow again. God is more than able to rekindle the fire that had gone out. Because, according to Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 10, he could even breathe on dry bones, and the dry bones can live again. However, I have a warning for you. I have a warning for you that after the Almighty God has rekindled your fire, you must remember to watch out and beware of those things that put out the fire originally. Retrace your steps. Find out where you fell. Remember those things that creeped upon you little by little that put out the fire of God in you and avoid them like a plague. There are things that the Almighty God said we were to resist. He said in his word we are to resist the devil. But when it comes to useful loss, he didn't ask you to resist, he asked you to flee. There are things you must run away from, great man of God, great woman of God. There are times to stand and fight. There are times to run. Pay attention to the word of the living God. Remember that if you are to get your fire back again, you have to repent, you have to confess, you have to forsake. The Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 13, Proverbs 28 verse 13, it says, he that concealeth his sins shall not prosper, but he that confesses and forsaketh them shall obtain mercy. You must be willing to restitute your ways. You must be willing to repair the altar of the living God. And then you can go back to the Almighty God and say, Father, give me a second chance. Kindle my fire again. The Almighty God is saying to every one of us tonight, loud and clear, the fire must never go out. Tonight I want to make some altar calls. First of all, I want to call on those of us who might not even know anything about the fire we're talking about. Some of us who probably have not even given our life to Jesus. Oh, we go to church. Oh, we belong to a denomination. <laughs> but we are still living in sin. Let me tell you the truth, my brother and my sister. The word of God is clear. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things. How many things? All things have become new. If you claim to be a child of the living God, and you are still living in sin, Somebody is deceiving somebody. Don't listen to human philosophy. Don't let the satanic preachers lead you to hell. When they tell you 
that as long as you are in this flesh, you cannot live a life of holiness. Somebody is lying. The word of God is clear. He that is born of God cannot sin. He didn't say you cannot be tempted. He said that you cannot sin. Because the seed of God is in him. I know we are surrounded by temptations. The Lord Jesus Christ was tempted, tempted in all points, yet without sin. Let me tell you the truth, my brother and sister. No matter the temptation, no matter how hungry a cat may be, a cat is not going to eat grass. No matter the temptation. Why? They don't eat cat in this generation. So if you say you are a child of God and you are still living in sin, hear the word of the Lord. Come to the foot of the cross. Ask God for salvation. Ask God for the genuine salvation. Ask him for that power that can transform your lives so that you begin to live as a child of the Holy One of Israel. So if there's anyone here tonight who is not yet living that life of a true child of God, I'm going to call on you tonight. You might be the only one that God sent me all the way from Africa to speak to. I'm going to call on you to come and surrender your life to Jesus. Or there might be those people who once upon a time were truly children of the living God, but they've gone back into the world. And the Lord brought you to Azusa in order to restore you. I will call upon you that you too will come back to that God and he will receive you to himself. Such people, you will be on my left here. And then I have another call for those who know that the fire in their life is waning. That the fire is no longer as bright as it used to be. And they want the almighty God to revive them. They will stand right in front of me here. And then I have an altar call for those who know that they are ex-champion, that the fire had actually gone out, that they used to hear from God, but they are no longer hearing from him, that once upon a time their visions were bright, but the visions are gone out, and they want the almighty God to rekindle their fire. I will be calling upon you too, and you will be standing on my right. And together we are going to call on the Almighty God. What he did a hundred years ago, he can do it again tonight. So, if you know that you belong to one of those three categories of people, begin to come. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, or you want to return to the maker the savior of your soul, you stand on my left. If you feel that your fire is growing dim and you want God to blow on your fire to bring you a revival, come and stand in front of me. If you feel that the fire is already gone out and you want God to rekindle your fire, I want you to stand on my right. Let's do that very quickly now. And we're going to pray. And as you begin to come, begin to talk to the Almighty God. The prayer of tonight is going to be the prayer of warriors. The prayer of those who are desperate for the fire of the Almighty God. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you stand on my left and begin to cry unto the Almighty God to save your soul. If you want him to revive you, begin to cry unto him and say, wind of the Holy Spirit, blow 
on my fire. Blow and let my fire begin to burn bright again. And if your fire is already gone out, I want you to stand on my right and begin to cry unto the Almighty God and say, Father, rekindle my fire tonight. Rekindle my fire tonight. And those of you who believe that your fire is burning bright, Open your mouth now and begin to cry out for your brothers and sisters that the Almighty God will send out His fire upon this congregation. Let's cry to the Almighty God. Let's lift our voice to Him. Let's call on the Almighty God and say, Father, send the fire again. Send the fire again. Send the fire again. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow. Go ahead, cry unto him. Talk to the Almighty God.